What's going on guys? Matthew Muniz here. Welcome back to the channel. Today, we're gonna to discuss blockchain technology. I'm gonna do my best in this video to help explain what blockchain technology is. I'm gonna give some examples. We're also gonna talk about the benefits of blockchain technology and what solutions it's going to provide to us, whether now or in the future. And this is also gonna be the start of some crypto related videos that I start to dive into in my channel. Now I'm not gonna do a video every single week on crypto, maybe not even every month, but I do wanna start putting out some content on cryptocurrency because it's becoming more and more a part of my own investments. Recently I've been receiving passive income in the form of Bitcoins and I'll talk about that later in the video. But basically a few things have changed in my life recently to where I needed to spend a lot of time researching Bitcoin specifically and blockchain technology. And after doing all that research, I decided that I wanna do my best to help you guys understand what it is so you can make educated decisions as well. So let's get right into the video. So first things first, what exactly is blockchain and how do cryptocurrencies use it? Well, blockchain technology is basically a technology that utilizes a decentralized publicly distributed ledger. And a ledger is a list of transactions, usually debits, credits, and account balances. And that pretty much sums it up. So the video's over. Now I'm just kidding. So for instance, with Bitcoin, it uses blockchain technology to record public financial transactions that involve the cryptocurrency. And to break it down even further, each block has information of specific transactions that connect to the next one. And every single block that goes further on down the chain utilizes information from the previous block. And with it being a public network where thousands or even millions of PCs that are connected to a certain software have access to this public ledger, they're all able to verify the information on each block. So how does blockchain work? Well, every person that has a wallet or an account on a specific blockchain has two keys. They have a public key and a private key. Now, a public key, everyone can see, everyone has access to. It's basically a key that you can give to someone that allows them to send you money or information. Now, you also have a private key, and the private key you keep only to yourself. The reason for that is, is because it gives you access to all of the funds and all of the information that's in your private account. So you would never give out your private key. You give out your public key, and a lot of people like to think of it like an email address. You give out your email address to allow someone to communicate with you, but you don't give out your private key, which would be your password to access your email address. Hopefully that makes sense. So when a transaction occurs on the blockchain, a private key is used to create a digital signature. So once that digital signature is created and the transaction is accepted, miners take over. And now miners use computational power, uh, a ton of energy and electricity in order to crunch numbers or mathematical algorithms, which will then allow the transaction to be posted to the public ledger or to place the block on the chain. And when that happens, because they've put in that time and effort, they're rewarded with something like Bitcoin. So for instance, you get rewarded with 6.25 Bitcoin when that happens. And that's as of May 11th, 2020, and that's due to what's called the halvening. So every four years, the halvening happens where that reward is actually cut in half. So sometime in 2024, that 6.25 reward is gonna be cut down to a little over three Bitcoins. So it's gonna to continue to be less and less moving into the future. So before we go into why something like this would be beneficial, because if you think about it, we already have banks, we already have PayPal, and Venmo, which are super convenient to use. Why would we wanna use blockchain? Well, we'll get to that. But really quick, I wanna just go over the difference between centralized and decentralized. So the big thing that people talk about when it comes to something like Bitcoin is that it's decentralized. What that means is there's no single entity that holds power over the entire ledger. Everything is public knowledge. You can access it any time if you use the specific software. Now, the reason that you wouldn't want one centralized entity to have total power is because then they may want to start making profits. Maybe they're going to start charging you fees to handle your money. Or perhaps there may be some malicious intent involved where they're stealing money. There could be all sorts of things. Whereas with Bitcoin, the argument is that through it being decentralized and everyone having access, it's extremely hard to make any changes or do anything without people noticing. And Bitcoin is immutable, which means that as soon as a transaction is recorded, there's no way to go back and change it. It's irreversible, which is very important because I'm gonna talk about that in my real life example coming up shortly. So what makes blockchain technology beneficial? You know, how is it gonna benefit us? Well, we live in the digital age nowadays, we spend a lot of our time on the internet meeting new people. You know, I have friends in Australia, I have friends in Russia, all over the world. When you meet new people, it's hard to trust them because you've never met them face to face or anything like that. 
Now, when you start to involve money or trading goods or services, it becomes even more important to have a way to protect yourself or make sure that your relationship is trusted. You know, there's a lot of scammers out there nowadays and you need to be careful. So luckily, you can use a centralized institution such as you know, PayPal, Venmo, some type of third party program to facilitate the exchange of your money or whatever. However, there's fees involved with that. There's currency exchange fees. There's time involved. You know, a lot of times you can't take out that money for one to three days. You know, so there's definitely some opportunities to make that easier and a little bit safer as well. And when I, when I say safer, I do understand that PayPal has, for instance, buyer protection. However, sometimes the buyer doesn't need protection. Maybe the, the seller needs protection. For me specifically, something that I've recently done is sold some goods and services, and I felt like I was at risk for people doing what's called a chargeback. Now, I'm an honest person, so I do what I say I'm gonna do. However, that doesn't necessarily mean that the person buying the service is an honest person. They could charge back and PayPal could say, oh, all right, and then they take the money that was given to me, they take it back, and then I get charged a fee as well. So we don't want that to happen. So one thing that I started doing is I'm accepting Bitcoin from people, and because Bitcoin is immutable, there's no way for them to charge back. Now, like I said, I provide what I say I'm gonna do, so it works out well, there's no issues. However, if that person was a scammer, there's not anything that they can do to scam me because I don't do anything until I receive the Bitcoin. As soon as I see that confirmation show up in my wallet, then I'm good to move forward. You know, another example is if you're trying to sell a vehicle or something on Craigslist. Well, Craigslist is pretty sketchy nowadays. I feel like back 10 years ago or five years ago, it was a lot, it was a lot easier to sell stuff, but now everything just seems so challenging. There's always so many people out there trying to take advantage of you. And with a currency like Bitcoin, for instance, if someone sends you Bitcoin, that money's yours. There's no way for them to get that back unless somehow they steal your private key. So in all honesty, that offers its own forms of protection for the seller. Now, that's not all blockchain technology can do. You know, people are talking about using it in voting in the future, you know, medical records, all sorts of things. Uh, there's tons of opportunity when it comes to blockchain technology, and I'm pretty excited to see what happens. So before I wrap up this video, I just wanna say if you found anything beneficial in this video or if you have any questions, leave them down in the comments below. I did my best to give examples that helped me specifically and hopefully they can help you too better understand what blockchain technology is. If you haven't already, make sure you smash the like button down below. Make sure you subscribe to the channel. We do videos every single Thursday at 3.15 p.m. Eastern time. Hope to see you guys in the next one. Take care.